and welcome to Healthy Aging. Today, Americans visit doctors 22% more often than they did in the mid-1980s. Americans 65 and older increased their doctor's visit rate by approximately six times. Elderly patients are more likely to be over-medicated, which may lead to delirium and dementia. Out-of-pocket expenses included health insurance premiums, medical co-payments, and prescriptions. Half of these payments go to prescription drugs and dental care. Figures are much worse for elderly and lower income class and those with chronic health problems. Patients cannot afford to fill approximately 22% of the prescriptions written each year. Prescription drugs are the sixth largest monthly expense for most people over 65. In an article from the University of Buffalo, different physicians use different drugs to treat different conditions, and some of these drugs interact in some cases exacerbating the side effects of the other drugs that are being taken for other conditions. 25% of admissions to nursing homes result from failed drug regimes, non-compliance by patients, drug interactions, and inappropriate medications being prescribed. According to Dr. Anderson, proper pharmaceutical therapy management probably could cut in half the number of drugs most seniors are taking, so the amount of money they are spending is reduced and the quality of their lives is much improved. A study published in the Journal of Geriatric Society stated over 6,700 patients studied took an average of five drugs, with 19% of them taking nine or more medications. Between 17 and 19% had medication errors, and 30% had possible medication errors. According to Dr. Sanjay Gupta, one-fifth of seven million older Americans aged 65 or older are given medications that are rarely appropriate for their age. Worse still, Nearly 1 million swallow pills that an expert panel has determined seniors should probably never take. Drug-related problems each year cost as much as $182 billion, kill as many as 198,815 people, put 1.8 million in hospitals, and account for up to 28% of all hospital emissions. This study is from 1996. Do you think it has gotten better or worse since? Dr. Alan Greenberg stated, I can honestly say that unless you are a serious accident, your best chance of living a ripe old age is to avoid doctors and hospitals and learn nutrition, herbal medicine, and other forms of natural medicine. Almost all drugs are toxic and are designed only to treat symptoms and not to cure anyone. In short, our mainstream medical system is hopelessly inept and or corrupt. The treatment of cancer and degenerative diseases is a national scandal. And that most people don't realize that pharmaceutical medicine is a false paradigm doomed to failure, as most drugs will damage the mitochondria as well as interfere with essential biochemical pathways. I strongly object to Medicare coverage of prescription drugs, because the more drugs people take, the worse their health will be. A better idea would be Medicare coverage for nutritional supplements and other alternative treatments. The popular and highly promoted new arthritis drugs, Vioxx and Celebrex, have been linked by researchers to a small but troubling increase in the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Vioxx patients face double the risk of serious cardiovascular problems, including strokes and heart attacks. Bacol, a cholesterol medication, was pulled off the market because it was associated with a rare form of muscle breakdown that led to 31 deaths. The deaths appeared to occur more often when the drug was used by elderly patients in conjunction with another cholesterol drug. It is estimated that 700,000 Americans took Bacol. According to Dr. George Lundberg, Crisis of Contemporary Medicine, Billions for Cures and Pennies for Care. I also know that people in Japan and Sweden, countries that spend far less on medical care, have achieved longer, healthier lives than we have. As a physician, I know that most dramatic and costly measures may be ineffective and painful. Are Americans healthier? Guess again. U.S. spends the most revenue per capita on health care, more than twice that of the next country. Out of 191 nations assessed, U.S. ranked 37th in the world for overall health system performance. The health of Americans were 72nd on the list. In longevity, the U.S. ranked 24th at 70 years. Is bed rest good? A study published in the back letter found 20 days of bed rest is equivalent to three decades of aging. Three weeks of bed rest in 1966 caused a greater deterioration in cardiovascular and physical work capacity than did 30 years of aging in these men. Some of the physiological damage inflicted by bed rest would likely be permanent. A new study offers the strongest argument yet for getting fit. California researchers found the ability to exercise, as measured on a treadmill test, is more important in predicting how long a person will live than obesity, heart disease, or smoking. The National Institute of Health reports that moderate exercise and a low-fat diet can dramatically reduce people's chances of getting diabetes. 
an even better result than attained with drug therapy. Incidence of diabetes is increasing in academic proportions as Americans are aging, gaining weight, and becoming less active. Taking calcium to prevent osteoporosis? Hong Kong, people consume 4 to 500 milligrams of calcium a day. Singapore, people consume 600 milligrams per day. USA, people consume 1,000 milligrams per day. Singapore only has 10% of the hip fractures as the USA, and Hong Kong has 30% of the hip fractures of the USA. Milk and milk byproducts are leading contributors to the $1.5 trillion sickness industry. Milk causes allergies, gas, constipation, obesity, cancer, heart disease, infectious diseases, and osteoporosis. Several studies have concluded that drinking milk is more likely to cause than to prevent osteoporosis because the amount and type of protein in milk results in a great loss of calcium in the bones. Exercise is the best prevention for osteoporosis. Wolf's Law. Bone is dynamic and constantly remodels according to the stresses applied to it. Medscape article on osteoporosis offers exercise as a possible prevention mode. American Journal of Public Health says that men in their 30s who jog have at least 5% more bone density than men who do not jog. In 1987, people 55 and older made up only 9% of the health club members, but by 2000, that figure jumped to 23%. The benefits of exercise in this crowd are clear. Studies have shown that getting stronger, increasing flexibility, and boosting cardiovascular endurance help stave off many hazards of aging. Less stress, less diabetes. Decreasing stress and controlling diet and exercise have been linked to a decrease in diabetes decreasing risks up to half. Your doctor of chiropractic may be able to talk to you about stress reduction, improved diet, and improving your quality of life. Improving your mind with exercise. According to Reuters, elderly women who exercise regularly are less prone to suffer mental decline, another indication that physical activity helps stave off some of the frailties of aging. For every mile per day that the woman walked, they lowered the risk of mental decline by 13%. Walking speed was not a factor. Exercise and cancer. Obesity and inactivity may significantly increase the risk of cancer of the pancreas, a hard-to-treat disease that kills nearly 29,000 Americans each year, including Apple CEO and founder Steve Jobs in October 2011. Your chiropractor may be able to work with you on an exercise program right for you. If you suffer from pain or stiffness while exercising, chiropractic may be a very valuable part of your exercise program. When asked, are chiropractors a reliable alternative to traditional medicine? Dr. Sanjay Gupta stated, chiropractic is the second largest primary health care profession. Since there is a growing trend in alternative medicine, people have made chiropractic part of their health care routine. And that chiropractors must have extensive knowledge of all systems of the body, specifically disorders relating to the spine. Spinal misalignment can cause interruption to the nervous system, making overall health poor. Chiropractors work to align your spine to restore normal function to the body. Medicine treats disease and chiropractic facilitates the body's own healing ability. And according to an article in Orthopedics Today titled, Time to Recognize the Value of Chiropractic Care, science and patient satisfaction surveys cite usefulness of spinal manipulation. And overall, manipulation has the advantage of reducing pain, decreasing medication, and rapidly advancing physical therapy.